Hey and welcome to the Underground Under Pipe Piper, this is episode 6, and in today's episode, we continue our wireless hacking, and we're gonna, I'm gonna teach you how to crack WPA and WPA2. So I've just whipped together a little PowerPoint, uh, hopefully it will be a short, and then we can go and proceed and do some about WPA cracking. So WPA is a security method to secure Wi-Fi networks replacing the broken WEP security. WPA supports many types of authentication. Pre-check keys are the only WPA security that is possible to crack at the current moment, or PSK. Uh, WPA is different to WEP, unlike WEP, where statistical analysis is used to determine the key. Now, um, plain brute forcing techniques can be used. Now, this means that you test the password, if it doesn't work, you move on to the next password. You have no idea about what the key might be. Test random passwords until the actual password is found. Now, this is because, unlike WEP, WPA keys are not static. So, the only way to collect information about the key is to capture a handshake between the client and the access point. Now, you may remember from WEP character uh, cracking when we collected IVs and then we determined the key from there. This time we have to actually capture a handshake or the hash as I like to say across the air and then we go and proceed and crack that hash. So handshaking is done when a client connects to a network. Now pre-shift keys can be anything from 8 to 63 characters in length. I also forgot to put on this slide is WPA passwords are salted. Now this means that they're salted with the AES ID, the name of the network, as well as the password. So this stops people from just producing whole tables of hashes and being able to look them up because everyone has a different AES ID. Uh, so they're salted with the name and prevents people producing hash tables and that rainbow tables and that sort of thing. Alright, so it could be as long as this, or as small as this, <laughs> the 8As there, or it could be as big as this. Now that's a total of 63 characters. Now let's be realistic, I mean, who's gonna in their right mind have that password? It'd be fucking ridiculous if you had to answer that every time you want to connect to your Wi-Fi network, and or you want to enter that into an iPhone. That would be a nightmare, and if you made a mistake, um, that would just be insane. Most people are going to have the 8 to 10 character length password and robots are going to have that 63 length uh, password. Using the brute force approach uses a lot of computer um, power. WPA passwords are encrypted with what's called AES and this is a 256 bit encryption which is pretty big and it's bigger than most other algorithms. So according to the aircrack-ng wiki, computers can test 150 to 300 passwords per second. It effectively becomes impossible to crack a pre-shared key, says that. That's the quote I got off the aircrack website. Now this is bullshit. This is just BS. This is why. For example, people often choose their date of birth for their passwords, right? So, 8 characters is minimum length for WPA. A standard date of birth or date um, format is XX slash XX slash XXXX day, month, year, and this is, applies to the Australian um, method, and I think it's the European method too, but it's not the US method. If it was, it doesn't it still makes this um, valid anyway. So, Take, if we take out the slashes, what does it equal? Well, it equals 8 characters. Now, do you think people are going to use their date or date of birth as their Wi-Fi password? So, if we were to test, if we're able to test 300 passwords per second, says the Aircrack website and air quotes, I'm doing that now, I can't, no, you can't see me, then to test every date since the last 100 years, it would be 365 times 100, which is 36,500. Now, 36,500 divided by 300 
equals 120 seconds, which then equals 2 minutes. That's how long it would actually take you to test every possible date uh, since the last 100 years. So back on topic, I know I've talked a little bit about puzzles with crack and that sort of thing. I find it really interesting, but I'll cover it uh, in a later video. This is WPA, right? So most modern computers can do uh, five times the max amount, says on the Air Crack Web Wiki, which is 1,500. The success on cracking a password depends on the user. So if the users uh, say a hacker or a security penetration tester or someone who has a good understanding of computer security and that sort of thing they're gonna have put a complex password on their Wi-Fi network and you probably won't be able to end up cracking that but the usual Joe Bro, Bro will just put a simple password they think they'll think they're like a fucking genius putting like password one two three with the um, actual password and you'll probably be able to most likely break them types of passwords so to in order to crack WPA passwords uh, it needs to be a dictionary word or an uncomplex password that means a dictionary word with a few numbers or um, a dictionary word with some capitalized letters and that sort of thing meaning that if it's got symbols and that sort of thing you're probably not going to be able to crack it but you've got to remember that there's always other JPPA networks around you so if you can't crack one try the other so here's some statistics I just put together an Intel dual core um, 2.93 gigahertz can do 1500 that's my desktop processor my new laptop with an Intel i7 can do 3000 WPA passwords per second and these are GPU stats. I'm not going to go through it in today's tutorial but I will show you how to do that. And the NVIDIA GeForce GT 540M can do 3000 passwords per second. Uh, the NVIDIA GeForce 465 GTX can do 20,000 passwords per second and that's what I've currently got in my desktop it cost me about $200 at the time and I bought it six months ago so it's probably gonna only be $150 and I do a lot of PC gaming I'm a PC gamer so whoever says console gaming is a lot better um, can you do password cracking on the, your Xbox so I know I've talked a lot in this PowerPoint, probably more than it's actually going to take me to show you the crack and that sort of thing. But it's important that you, I have just introduced you into uh, what password cracking is and some statistics. I did some little maths and that sort of thing. So it's just a little introduction into password cracking as we're kind of entering it in this WPA type. Uh, cracking. So let's go and hack WPA. So I'm just going to bring up my backtrack box on VirtualBox. Um, switch to full screen. I forgot my USB adapter in there. Alright, so just start the terminal as always and we need to put out interface into monitor mode. So M1 and G start and uh, Actually, I'll just execute that command, and you can see that um, our interface is WLAN 0 M1 dash NG start WLAN 0 press enter, and that will proceed and go ahead. And monitor mode enabled on Mon 0, so we'll see what access points are available in our area. So arrow dump dash NG on our new monitoring interface Mon 0. And just give that a sec to scan through and that sort of thing. And today we're going to be hacking neighbor's Wi-Fi. So I'm going to cut that operation out. And let's collect some information. So just open a text editor here. So I'm going to copy the BSS ID. You'll need that. The channel is 10. And that's all the information. Here under the um, encryption, 
Uh, you can see that WPA is there. It doesn't matter whether it's WPA or WPA2. All that matters is it's this PSK um, encryption here. Uh, authorization, sorry. So, we need to stop our monitoring interface and put it on our access channel. So, mon-ng stop uh, mon0. And we'll go back to our previous command, start, but this time put it on the channel, which is channel 10. Clear this out. And now we can run arrow dump. Alright, so run arrow dump dash ng, and we're going to tell it what channel to capture. So channel 10, the BSSID of our access point, so you copy that in there. And that's too many S's. Some BSS ID, and what else do we need? I think that's it. Oh, and write to a file so dash W, uh, WPA, and just our interface, which is mon0. Execute that command. Now, I'm going to simulate, as I said, you need to capture a WPA handshake um, in order to go ahead and crack the password. I'm going to simulate someone connecting to the network, and then I'm going to show you how to kick someone off the network if someone's already connected. So as I said, you need a client connected to the network in order to crack the hash. So I'm just going to turn Wi-Fi on on my iPod and hopefully it'll go ahead and connect to neighbor's Wi-Fi. And as you can see, we've now got a client down here and that's a MAC address of my iPod. And down up the top here, you can see that we've got a WPA handshake in the top here so that means that we're successfully captured and we can go ahead and crack that but I'm not going to do that because I'm going to show you another scenario now sometimes you will have no clients on the network and you'll have to be patient and wait for someone to connect to the network and that sort of thing but if there's already someone connected to the network they're probably not going to most likely reconnect anytime soon so what we can do is that we can actually kick someone off a network using a deauthorization, and this is kind of another flaw in Wi-Fi is you can send deauthorized packets to anyone; they're not encrypted, so anyone can actually send them and kick anyone off the network. So if they were encrypted, you'd probably never be able to break WPA. Uh, but you know that's the way it is. So. I'm going to restart arrow dump here with my iPod connected and as you can see we've already got a client on the network and so what we need to do is open a new terminal and we can use the Airy play uh, to do injection and you can see the deauthorization attack is dash zero so Airy play um, dash zero the amount of times you want to deauthorize that person so I'm just going to say three you can say one um, whatever you want what else do I need to put in here the access points BSS ID so you paste that in there and we also need to tell it what client to connect to disconnect of the inter um, the access point sorry so we go over to here we copy the station MAC address here and we paste that into here and we also need to tell it the our interface which is mon0 and it'll say it's sending a deauthorization there and hopefully that worked so we've been deauthorized and there we go we connected there I know you didn't see this but on my iPod I had Wi-Fi networks off and it, for that three seconds it was deauthorized so, you know I lost connection and then my iPod went ahead and connected to neighbor's Wi-Fi again. And so we captured a WPA handshake. Alright, so once you do capture a WPA handshake, we need to go ahead and crack it. So you're going to need a word list file. Now there's one word list file that is included in Backtrack, but it's not very good. I prefer the Rock U, which I'll probably show in the next tutorial. But for this tutorial, we're going to just use a simple dictionary. I just went and grabbed uh, that dictionary file and choose, chose a password for my Wi-Fi um, access for something that we can actually crack. So 
I'm gonna go ahead and we can use the aircraft dash ng utility. We use the dash w for a word list to use. Uh, but before we do this, I'm just gonna copy my um, dictionary file to the actual root directory so it will be easier for us. So we can use the cp for copy and we use the slash pen test passwords. Uh, word lists and the dark dark code dot lst and we tell it where to put it so I'm just going to use the little squiggly line slash for our home directory and um, we need to put the name so I'm just going to call it word list then we go over here we type in word list we tell it the bs SID of our network. So copy that, paste that in. And we also need to tell it what file. So we call it WPA. We're going to use the WPA deauthorization packet. So deauthorization dot. And we also need to tell it. Just put an asterisk here, so anything can go in there and dot cap. Right, so we'll go ahead and try and crack that password against uh, word list. Now it's not doing 1,500 passwords per second because I'm running in a virtual box and it doesn't have full control over the CPU but it's going at a fair rate of 700 passwords per second. Now I'm just going to fast forward this because it's going to take a little bit of time. the key and the key is wireless. I made it simple so it actually works. Alright so as you can see in this diagram up here we have the time it's taken so it's taken a pretty long time nearly half an hour. It's tested uh, I hate really no okay it's tested 1,100,000 138,268 keys. Alright, so as you can see, wireless and crack the master key. Alright, so that's it for today's tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time. Remember to subscribe, comment and like. As always, Piper out.